Hi everyone, it's Giovanni here from Web Summit 2021. Today I have the pleasure to be joined by Alex Correa, partner at KPMG Portugal. I want to start talking about um, the approach that KPMG uh, has uh, towards cryptocurrency and the blockchain. So the booming uh, uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain space, uh, how is, is that impacting the operations of uh, KPMG? How is KPMG uh, reacting to this uh, developing space? Okay, so um, around the, the blockchain as a technology and also all the crypto uh, market, for KPMG, uh, it's a very uh, challenging opportunity to develop new solutions and new offerings to our clients. So as um, um, a full suite one-stop shop for professional services and consulting, we can actually provide uh, services end-to-end -end from startups we need funding, from the technology part, from strategic plans, and then at the end of the day, even accounting services. You know, uh, if someone puts some Bitcoin on their balance sheet, how will they account that? How will that be um, valued uh, throughout the year? How will that be taxed? How can they move the money around? So all this uh, uh, is the kind of services that we can pr provide as KPMG. And with the presence of more than 150 countries, you know, 200,000 uh, employees, we have the local expertise that can be leveraged, especially for uh, you know multicultural and multinational organizations. And so, like in the last year or so, did you notice uh, an increase in terms of uh, requests from your clients to um, access your services, your specific blockchain-related services? Uh, yeah. So, as a distributed company, um, we have different expertise in different areas, right? So uh, we have a very big practice in the US around digital ledger, so blockchain technologies. We've been doing some projects for private blockchains, uh, especially with our alliance uh, partners like Microsoft or IBM. And there are a lot of use cases where it makes sense to uh, leverage that blockchain technology and digital ledger for some uh, uh, cases. Uh, one example, you know, uh, credit registry, uh, for banks. It's something that is shared across banks and with the regulator. It's not public, you know, but it's something that can be deployed on the blockchain. Uh, if you are talking about public, then it's a bit different, right? Uh, everybody can look at the chain. So there are specific uh, um, initiatives and, and full disclaimer, uh, I, do, I speak uh, overall as KPMG, but I won't discuss specific projects where, where we worked. But for instance, um, Ethiopian government is deploying national IDs on top of Cardano uh, uh, blockchain, which for me is quite interesting initiative to have um, public civil servant uh, use of the blockchain technology. So those are the kinds of um, use cases that for us uh, uh, are important and propose opportunities of business development. Um, talking about the Tesla that we discussed before, uh, when the Tesla in February announced that they bought $1.5 billion of, of Bitcoin, there are a lot of questions that you can make, right? So how did they do it? How do you go around? Do you just install an app and buy? You cannot do that, right? So the overall process of actually doing that, custodian, accounting, that part, how to tax, how to um, you know, account for the swings in price, how do you do that? And that's the kind of uh, issue that KPMG can help locally the company. Another one is uh, related with remittances, right? So with blockchain and crypto technology, you can easily send you know, $1 billion from the US to South Africa, then to Russia. How do you account that from the tax perspective? And this, all this knowledge and expertise that we bring in from the several KPMGs around the world to deliver solutions to our clients. That's interesting. So, of course, KPMG is uh, dealing with institutions, big corporations, co big companies, banks. So um, how do you see this, prof this process of um, institutionalization of digital assets? At what point uh, uh, are we at the moment and what are the challenges that still uh, are barriers for institutions to get into the space? Yeah, um, institutions, one, one issue I think uh, is currently undergoing is around regulation, right? So um, different governments, different 
uh, countries are um, looking at regulation on how to handle uh, this this innovation, right? And from that perspective, of course, the the corporations and institutions have to be a bit cautious on on the level of risk they will uh, expose. For instance, uh, just to reference once again public information, um, there was a big hash rate. Uh, being mined for Bitcoin in China, more than 50%, right? Uh, currently, there is zero. Why? There was a ban in crypto in China. China is promoting their CBDCs. Um, and basically, what happened was the hash rate dropped and then started to show up in different countries like Kazakhstan, Russia, Ukraine, and a lot in the US. Currently, US is number one with 35% of the market in hash rate. And the market evolves around also this regulation. KPMG can also help on this part, looking at the, because we work a lot around risk consulting and the regulators to uh, show the clients the opportunities, pros and cons with different uh, situation and how can they move around. Uh, very specific, for instance, in, in regulation, um, we, we are having uh, ETP, so exchange traded products around crypto in Europe for quite some time. Um, Switzerland even have some cantons that accept taxes being paid in Bitcoin. But in, in October, just last month, it was the first ETF released in the US, right? So we already had something like three or four in, in uh, Toronto, in Canada, and we just released the first ETF. The SEC authorized the first ETF uh, at NASDAQ, um, and, and it was, you know, uh, quite a milestone, I would say, at least for the regulation in the U.S. I think even this week, uh, it came out a report from Biden government around stable coins. So this is kind of the information that feeds back the loop into the industry so that the industry can know how to adapt. Because, it, and this is a very important message, the industry wants to be legal, right? So they want to comply. But it's, it's important to have a clear vision on what is what, right? Um, and uh, interesting, for instance, in the US, there is a bit of turf war between the SEC and CFTC around is crypto a commodity or is crypto a security? And this discussion is not clear, right? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it's important to have sort of benchmark around the world to make more, more light into the industry. The regulatory question is definitely important. So would you say that uh, this is the only obstacle that is preventing institu institutionalization cryptocurrency? So basically, are you, you're saying that the interest is there. Pe uh, these uh, big corporations and institutions want to get into the space, but they still see it as a bit uh, too much of a gray area sometimes, and you, they, they, are, they are afraid of risks, but they, in terms of technology, uh, everything is already in place to attract these actors? Uh, um, I wouldn't say that. So I would say it, it's not only regulation, it's the value proposition, right? So you take into account the regulation as one of the risks, okay? You, of course, you have to comply but also the value of it. Why would you do it, right? And for that, uh, different initiatives can, can come on uh, showing why this is, uh, and this is not financial advice, of course, but from the portfolio perspective, it makes sense to have some investment, I would say, in crypto to better understand the technology uh, and educate yourself, you know, do your own research and try to understand how to move slowly into, into this space on the crypto side. On the blockchain, I would say that uh, the technology is quite good. Um, the enterprise providers of blockchain technology um, are, are known, like Microsoft or IBM. So it's easy to piggyback. You just have to find the correct use cases to, to, to use it. So we see that, uh, as you said, regulation is different depending on the geographic area we're talking about. Yes. Uh, maybe you can point out at a specific uh, regulatory framework somewhere around the world that is particularly effective in order to facilitate, uh, in order to harmonize yes. the uh, institutionalization of cryptocurrency that maybe could serve as an example for other also um, jurisdictions. Yeah. Um, so here you really have extremes, right? So if you think of China, crypto banned, only CBDCs. If you think of El Salvador, Bitcoin is now a legal tender. 
And in the middle, there is a lot of regulation uh, different. India is uh, pushing uh, some new regulation, at least until the end of the year. Um, the US already touched on this. They are still figuring out if it's commodity or more security and, and uh, uh, the best uh, things to do. For instance, one, uh, one of the SEC commissioners, Hester Pierce, has proposed um, sort of walled garden safe harbor approach where the crypto innovation could uh, flourish, but with legal boundaries on what they could and not do, but do not have uh, right away all the regulatory burden on top of them. This was something that we also did here in Portugal. So our digital transition secretary of state, um, Andres Vedo, has presented here at the Web Summit, um, we call uh, Zonas Livres Te de Tecnologia, uh, or Technology Free Zones, where you can foster and do experimentation in the field to better understand how will the blockchain and crypto affect in the long run. Because, uh, for instance, the, 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 the experience in El Salvador, no one knows how will that come, you know, because they are trying that live currently with the population of one country, right? And these free uh, technology zones that we implemented here in Portugal, you might find them in Singapore, you might find them in Switzerland, really make a difference. And I think it's something that for sure US will probably adopt in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, that's interesting, the comparison that you made between El Salvador and what uh, is going here in Portugal. So would you say that the um, the experiment of El Salvador is, uh, uh, I mean, is a risky one because in case the implementation of all this uh, Bitcoin strategy doesn't go as planned, it could cause massive stress to the uh, country's economy. While in the case you mentioned, it's more like about creating some sort of uh, text, uh, yeah. t test zones where the damage is, is, uh, is, is, minimi is minimized. Yes, definitely. Um, there are some... Uh, safeguards in El Salvador, you know, you can pay crypto and then convert right away to U.S. dollars. Uh, but nevertheless, it's a, it's a first time experience. No, 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 one, no one has done it before and uh, they are doing it with the full country. Right. So the idea here is to uh, safeguard an area where you can actually um, implement, try out your innovation and move forward uh, uh, um, to then also in the other point of view, to also help the regulation. Because regulators will look at this, innovation agencies, regulators, and see, oh, this works, this doesn't work. And they will put that then, propose that as laws to better foster that uh, uh, innovation. That's an interesting point of view because uh, the pace of innovation sometimes is so fast that regulation cannot just uh, uh, keep up with it. So what, what could be um, a solution for uh, in, um, regulators and innovators to kind of find a balance uh, and find the, the right pace to move forward together? Um, I, I like to use the analogy of, uh, you know, uh, tolling a car with uh, elastic, that innovation is going forward very fast and it stretches the elastic and then sometimes then the regulation you know, catches up with the other car. So if you think about it, it's very hard to make regulation for something that you don't know. It's not like you have a crystal ball, to, you know, to know the future. So I, I think the, the, the safe harbor approach that uh, uh, US is proposing, or uh, Zonas Livres, the technology as we have here in Portugal, uh, free tech zones, are, uh, it's not a silver bullet, you know, to, to fix everything, but it's a, a very good approach to uh, free the innovators to flourish and allow also the regulators to then adapt the laws as they see the experiments in the field, All right? So uh, I think that's one of the, the, the solutions. The other one is also work a lot uh, with academia. So universities, some of the um, blockchain initiatives and crypto initiatives have a sort of ecosystems working uh, with local uh, universities. Here in, uh, in Portugal, for instance, Instituto Superior Técnico, which is our uh, premium engineering school, um, just hired a, um, a crypto uh, lady from Imperial College, and they are focused, they will release next Monday, a crypto lab where experimentation can be done, innovation can fo uh, foster, and then move that from the lab to actually uh, people, and geographies that can be 
walled garden and protected, but can be tested in the real world. A lot of things are, are tested as we speak.